I'm Lyons Kilius. So I've met probably a lot of you. Um, I'm from Homania. Most of you have probably at least some familiarity with our spotlight program and maybe some of our other services. But to be honest with you today, I'm not here to talk about any of those at all. Uh, today, what I really want to do is talk about a little social media reprogramming. That's what we'll call it. I want to get you to think about social media in a way you probably haven't before. And the reason I think it's needed is actually because I've always been like extremely surprised by the way a ton of realtors tackle social media. Um, I feel like realtors, and I'm going to generalize a lot here. I hate generalizing, but I'm going to be doing it quite a bit because realtors, for the most part, have this like fundamental misunderstanding of what social media is for. And if you don't understand something, it's very hard to be successful at it. So my goal today is to tear down all those pre-existing ideas you may have in your head um, that realtors generally have. And I want to make sure that we can start fresh. So just to be clear to today's seminar, it's not going to be about um, going over like the nitty gritty details of how to do social media. I'm not going to show you how to like sign up for TikTok or post your Instagram reel or how to retweet or create a Facebook page, none of that kind of stuff. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is just kind of platform agnostic. It's more like wide scoping things. My goal today is to equip you with a fresh perspective on what social media is at its core. So realtors, that's what you guys are, right? Well, most of you probably. You're amazing at selling houses. That's what you sign up for, right? Uh, that's what you're trained to do. That's what you got experience doing. You might be a new agent, maybe been doing it for four years. It really doesn't matter, right? You all became a real estate agent to sell houses. And presumably this is something you know inside and out or you're learning to know inside and out. I guarantee, obviously, at some point, you've at least tried tackling social media. It's almost like par for the course these days. And if you haven't even tried it, maybe it's something that you at least thought about, right? More than likely, if you have thought about it or you have tried it, it didn't go as well as you planned. You gave it a go. Maybe you're still giving it a go, but it never really got that traction that you were expecting. And you never saw like this increase in sales that you probably promised from going on and posting on social media. And again, I hate generalizing, but realtors, for the most part, tend to really fail at leveraging social media to expand their business. This makes no sense to me. I've had this conversation with lots of realtors, lots of brokers, lots of managers. Realtors are great at networking. They're great at charming people. They're great at controlling social situations. They tend to be charming, charismatic. Successful realtors have this personality that draw people to them, right? It's like kind of salesperson mentality. Now, these are exactly the tools that you need to succeed at social media. A lot of the traits that make someone successful as a real estate agent should directly translate to social media success. You've got this like perfect tool set to succeed at social media, but you're not succeeding, right? And the question is why? And it's probably for a lot of reasons. And I hate to generalize, but I'm going to do it. But at its core, you're likely looking at social media just completely the wrong way. So the problem is that 99% of realtors are looking at social media the wrong way. They just think of it as like this free advertising. Platform. Make sure you meet your mic, please. They sign up for an account. Every time they have a listing, they just post it, right? It's, it's very mechanical. Every time they even open a house, you post it. There's just like very little variety in posts. Uh, you might link to the occasional like real estate article or market stat <laughs> summary, or you might even announce that you've got like a new award, you just sold a home, like, you know, 10% over asking or whatever, right? Like these posts, like they're generally not very inspired and it's super formula. Like it's, wow. it's so cookie cutter. <laughs> Sorry, Gina, I'm going to, not sure if I can mute you there. 
Debbie, is that something you can do too? Uh, I'm actually, you have to make me co-host or something because unfortunately I can't do anything. Oh, I'm not, I'm not a host actually. So oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's all right. So uh, <laughs> Gene, if you don't mind muting your mic, uh, getting your conversation here. Oh, I can't because I need yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going, see if I can remember where I, where I left off. Okay, so yeah, there's there's very little variety in these posts, right? Uh, it's all very formula. Self-promotion posts, self-promotion posts, like after self-promotion posts, right? Posting, posting, posting over and over again. And then realtors look and say, okay, well, they never get the follows or the engagement they're looking for and they get surprised. You're constantly tooting your own horn, constantly self-promoting. The problem is like, that's not what social media is about. It's not all about you. It's not all about your business. If this is what you're doing, you're like thinking about shameless this promotion. completely it's wrong. It's shameless self-promotion. It's not. Gosh, if this all sounds familiar, if this is what you've tried or maybe you're still trying it, I need to ask one thing from you and one thing from everyone who's listening today. Forget everything you know about social media, okay? I need, I need a clean slate. Toss away like any sort of preconceived notions or whatever anyone has told you in the past. And let's start from scratch. I need a clean slate to build from here. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the very beginning. It's a very simple question with a surprisingly simple answer. The question is, what is social media? Uh, sorry, Gina, do you mind muting your mic? You're getting a lot of background noise there, Gina. We can't mute your mic for you, so you're going to have to mute yourself if you don't mind, Gina. I just got someone to call her. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Debbie. Yeah, I, I apologize. Everyone's kind of hard to keep your train of thought when people are talking. I mean, again, for technical sure. issues. No problem. Technical issues okay. are like par for the course, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the question that we're asking today, what is social media? If you can answer this question properly, if you can like know what social media is at its core, it becomes quite an easy thing to master. Okay, and you can turn this into a viable platform. So the question that we're going to be answering today is what is social media? Essentially, social media is just like one gigantic social event, right? You're in a giant room, it's full of people. It's just a really big room with like a ton of people from all over the world, right? They're all looking to chat with each other. They're all looking to enjoy time spent together. Same as any sort of social function. Person-to-person -person interaction, people telling stories, people laughing together, enjoying their time together. It's really no more complicated than that. Yeah, okay, you're not in the same like physical space like you would in a normal, traditional social gathering. And all the interactions are virtual, but it's the exact same thing. You haven't been living in a cave all your life. You've probably been to like countless social functions, right? This is a very familiar environment to you. And given that you're a real estate agent, there's a very good chance this is something that you, this is an environment that you thrive in. So think about the last time you were at a social event. Let's do this like thought experiment with me. Who did you seek out and talk to to spend time with? The answer to that question is pretty simple, actually, right? It's the people you enjoy being around the most. They might be your friends or family, people that seem interesting, the people that share interests with you, the people that make you feel good about yourself, the people that are charming, funny, entertaining, right? The cool kids at the party. You want to hang around with the cool kids at the party. Almost as inevitably, there's people at social events, and I know everyone's going to have like that one person that comes to mind that you'd probably rather avoid, right? There are people you hate spending time with. It could be for like any reason. It could be they're boring. Maybe they have this like really annoying grading personality. Maybe they make you feel uncomfortable. Who knows? Whatever the reason, everybody knows somebody like this. A person that you like desperately try and avoid. They're the annoying kid at the party, the party pooper, right? So just think about it for a second. What would you do if someone came up to you at a party 
made this happen to you before. It probably has. And they just would not shut up about their personal achievements, how great they are, how good they are at their job. Maybe they're trying to sell you some crazy business idea or Ponzi scheme type thing that you've like absolutely no interest in, right? Like a hundred percent when that happens, and I know you've all been there, you start looking around the room, try and find someone to like save you from the conversation, right? So you'd avoid that person. You definitely wouldn't like try and go out of your way to spend more time with them. This is exactly what most realtors do on social media. You wouldn't want to do this in a social environment, but you're doing it on social media. So there's obviously a disconnect or a problem here, right? No one likes someone who just talks about themselves exclusively. So yeah, like I said, social media is the exact same. You don't, no one wants to listen to someone that just constantly talks about themselves, right? Nothing interesting to say. This is really important. People, everybody has a finite amount of free time. Free time is a valuable commodity. For a lot of people, it's more valuable than money, right? You have to make people want to spend that free time with you. It's like a currency. You need to talk about things that are interesting and exciting. It doesn't even have to be about real estate. You're not trying to sell a house on social media. You're trying to attract an audience of people. You're trying to, I, I know realtors, especially, I know a lot of you guys at Heritage love this word. You're trying to expand your sphere of influence. You're trying to expand that audience. And the best way to do that is to make yourself interesting. You want to be the life of the party. So how do you make yourself interesting? Well, how do you do it when you're talking to someone in a social setting, right? You, that's what you want to do. You want to do that. You want to tell stories, share experiences, encourage engagement in the conversation, right? Ask questions. Most importantly, though, you really want to be interested in what other people have to say. It's not all about you. You're all realtors. This is your wheelhouse right? You're better at this than I am. You know how to excel in social situations. The same rules, they all apply to social media. Okay. I use the party analogy. It's very simple, clean, and very relevant. Well, here's another very relevant one, which requires a slightly different skill set. It's great to be the life of the party, and it's definitely a great way to attract followers that works on the macro level, the big picture, right? There's also the micro level you have to worry about with social media too, and in life. These are the one-in-one -one interactions that people have on social media. If you get a new follower, it's just like dating, right? You've asked them on a date, they've heard great things about you, and they've seen you at a social media party a few times. Now they're ready to get serious. They've hit that like button, maybe they follow you or press a little heart on your post, right? That says they want to take this relationship to the next level. So now it's up to you to prove to them that you're dating material. You need to convince them to stick around for a while, right? So how do you do this? Obviously, you're not actually dating the person. It's just an analogy. But what makes for a good date? You want to be funny. You want to be entertaining. It'll be fun to talk to. But there's obviously just, there's more than that, right? You need to be a good listener. You need to engage in the conversation. You need to go, go beyond telling of anecdotes and sharing interesting stories. Like that's all good for the party, but on the one-on-one, -on -one, you need to interact, right? That's the next big step, interaction. You can't just post stuff and forget about it. If you get a comment, reply to it, right? Continue the conversation. That's what people in social media are there for. Comment on other people's things. Even if they're not followers, that's even better. And if they, are, if they aren't followers, follow them, right? Or if they're following you, comment, follow them back. You got to engage. Don't be a greedy lover, right? You need to give as good as you get. You're all realtors. I've said this a billion times in this presentation so far. You're all people persons. You all have these skills. Like you want to make sure you use them. Okay, so at this point, I hope I've got the brain juices flowing a little bit just so you can think about how you should be thinking about social media. Social media isn't just a poster board for ads, right? It's a very familiar environment we've all been experiencing throughout all our lives. It's people and the interactions between these people that really do make social media 
social media. Okay, there's gonna be a bit of a pivot point in my presentation here. But before we go further, I really, 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 really wanna make sure I'm clear on this, right? Social media isn't for everybody. That's not like, that's not what I'm saying today. It takes time, not necessarily a lot of time, but it takes time and commitment, more importantly. And it can take a while before you actually see the fruits of your labor, before you see anything coming back to you. And that's why a lot of people end up quitting because they don't wait it out. Most common complaint I hear from people, agents regarding social media, is that I don't have time for it, right? And some people don't. I'm like, that's fine. It's an effective marketing strategy, but like any marketing strategy, you have to weigh the pros and cons. You're not going to use every marketing strategy plan out there, right? You have to pick and choose. One of the great things is that most traditional marketing, right? Print marketing, maybe farming in a neighborhood with postcards or whatever, that costs a lot of money. One of the great things about social media is it doesn't have to cost you a penny. You can spend on it, but you don't have to. It's really effective for real estate agents to have a little bit of time to invest. And I want to stress that it doesn't have to take a lot of time. A lot of agents think it takes more time than it actually does. But it is an investment, right? And it's an investment that not everybody is willing to make. So I just want to make sure that's like super clear. I'm not like saying everybody should drop what they're doing and do this. That being said, like a little mix of dedication, charisma, charm, and a clear strategy. It's all you really need. And it goes far away and being able to expand your sphere of influence and create like potentially a nonstop pipeline of leads. A lot of agents do this very successfully. The other thing I want to make clear for those of you that are content using social media, like most realtors pretty much do is like a poster board for ads and self-promotion, like I mentioned before, or maybe just have an account you never post just for the sake of having an account, right? Now, that's fine. It's not great. You're obviously not reaching your full potential, but it's still better than nothing. You won't, you won't get many or any leads out of it, but a lot of people actually, uh, like just general public, they use social media or the internet in general to like vet agents to make sure they've got you know, like a professional presence online. And that's actually surprisingly important from a professional capacity. Social media, and I see agents all the time that have like a website, but it doesn't really have much, but it's got like, you know, them and some of their accomplishments or whatever. And that's like perfectly fine because people will look into you before uh, signing on for one of their listings. So it's important that you have this presence. So all this being said, please don't like go deleting your account or because you think you're doing social media wrong because it's not necessarily wrong. It's just maybe not optimal. That's my big caveat speech. So now we're pivoting to a little bit more detailed stock. I've talked about a lot of like the macro, like big picture stuff, the hand-waving part of the conversation. That's like all the important stuff, right? Like as long as you understand what I've talked about so far, the most basic parallels, parallels between real world and social uh, media world, becoming successful at social media just boils down to common sense. That being said, like it couldn't hurt to talk a little bit more about specifics. So I'm going to talk about some do's and don'ts if you want, if you want to call it that. Uh, some advice, like kind of push you in the right direction on your new journey. And to make it fun, I put it in a top 10 list. I mean, you might, you might notice that there's only eight here, but top 10 just sounds so much better. And that's what Letterman did. So that's what I'm going to do here. So there's actually only eight top 10 tips, but that's okay. So tip number one, limit self-promotion. I've already said it before, but almost all realtors post the exact same things, right? House for sale, check out my photos, household just 10% over asking, whatever. I've said those things before. This is all self-promotion. It gets the word out about your specific business product or whatever, in this case, like uh, you know, your listings or maybe you, or it tries to promote the fact that you're a successful realtor. It's okay to do this, but people generally have this limited appetite for it. So you got to use it with a word of warning because it, think of it like this. Like if you're watching TV, you don't just tune in for the commercials, right? If there's a few commercials here and there, you suffer through them because the TV show you're watching is good. But if there's too many, you just get sick of watching whatever that station is. You flip over to something commercial free like Netflix or YouTube, right? So if you put up too many self-promoting commercials, <laughs> Your followers have a bajillion other alternatives for people to follow. 
So they'll just follow them instead, right? Free time is a valuable commodity and people are very careful about where they spend it. So you want to make sure they want to spend it with you. There's a couple of famous rules that are up on the slide here you may have heard of. There's this 90-10 or the 80-20 rule. Uh, these rules mean that like 10 to 20% of the things you post on social media can be business or self-promotion with the other 80 to 90% being like non-business related. Uh, these rules are fine as a rule of thumb, but honestly, like the big takeaway from that is just don't be self-promotion hungry. Your goal is to get a following, right? You got to remember what the goal is here. It's to increase your sphere of influence. You're very unlikely to find a buyer when you're selling like a specific home directly through social media, right? And that, that's okay because that's not what you're doing. Selling a specific home isn't your goal on social media. I'm going to say it again. I really want to reiterate this fact. Like your goal is to expand your sphere of influence. On social media, don't, don't lose sight of your goal. Tip number two, I'm going to rethink your posts. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. And it ties in perfectly with limiting self-promotion. And this is actually a really important, maybe one of the most important things on the list. If you can craft your posts well, you'll be self-promoting in a more subtle and entertaining way. Right. To a point where, like, I wouldn't even consider it self-promotion. Like, if you look at these 90, 10, 80, 20 rules, if you're trying to stick to one of those, it's kind of like cheating. You're self-promoting, but you're not, right? You have to break the rules. It's like cheating to win. Everyone loves shortcuts. So I'm going to show you some examples of some realtor posts I dug up a few weeks ago. They're from various platforms. Like I said before, like, it really doesn't matter what platform you're talking about. Social media is all the same. They're just the same, they're same thing, but like a slightly different look, maybe like a slightly different crowd of people, right? They're, it's like going to a different club, like this different environment, a different set of people, but at the heart of it, everyone's going there for the same thing to enjoy themselves and have a good time. So my, my goal here isn't to tell you like what to post, but just get you to think about how you're posting. That's the most important takeaway, okay? So here, here's very common posts you'll see on social media, on realtor social medias. List, I call them listing announcements, right? They're literally a dime a dozen. Picture of a house, maybe a small caption with the price and address, and maybe a few pictures of the house. You know, if you're lucky, you get a few more pictures. So what's the purpose of a post like this? You really going to sell this house to like one of the, like your 100 followers? <laughs> maybe, but it's doubtful, right? You think it's supposed to attract new followers? I eh, doubt it. Best case, you can get your seller maybe to reshare it with their friends, spread the word. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you might get someone to trickle back up the pipeline, either turn into a buyer or a future lead, but like the chances are so small, right? It's very unlikely that these best case scenarios will ever happen if you have, especially if you have a limited following. That's another thing too. Like if you only have like 100 followers, they're mostly probably your friends and family anyways, right? or like past clients. Is it okay to post listing announcements like this, even though there's like that small chance of something coming of it? Yeah, sure, I guess. So many realtors, realtors do it, but like I said before, it's, it's perfectly fine to use social media as a post word for self-promotion. It's just not the best way, right? If your goal is, and it should be, to increase your followers, increase that sphere of influence, right? You can post listing announcements in a much more creative way, in a way that, encourages interaction and sparks the interest of the viewers. I'm just gonna give you a few examples of those. Because you wanna rethink your listing announcement. You can show that you have a new listing for sale without like force feeding it to people. People are smart. They don't have to say, uh, see like a for sale sign and stuff to like know that you're a real estate agent trying to sell a home. You wanna post pictures or even better video that draws people in. You wanna pose a question, right? Try and engage ask people for advice, show them like a story, right? Just going through the posts up here. Again, this is static, so you don't get to see the videos, but the post on the left, it's perfect. This is the thumbnail, right? It asks a question, it encourages people to comment. And when you click on it, not only is it a video, but it has more information about the home listing, but the focus is on not just the home, but like the pool and the experience, right? Would you dive in? Especially in a hot summer, it's really easy to, to relate to that. Get a lot of comments. The post in the middle to something similar to it shows off a great stage apartment with quote unquote Parisian vibes, right? 
it encourages people to talk about these Parisian vibes and like that starts a conversation, right? And that's exactly what people did on this post. This post was very popular. You notice also how both these posts have captions. Captioning is so important. Makes them like a thousand times more effective. It's hard for a picture to start a story. Like, like imagine that picture of the pool there without the caption there. It's just a picture of a pool. Like who cares, right? But the, the caption starts the story. I guess the conversation started. So adding ca a caption gives some context and it goes a long way. Post on the right. <laughs> this is one I actually like really liked. I thought it was genius. So it's a pretty simple video of a seller lighting their fireplace after getting repaired and wet inspected uh, prior to sale. Uh, it's, it's a great story, right? And it's one that is amplified by the caption. The caption reads, watch as we light our 201-year-old fireplace for the first time in over 57 years. I mean, do you want to see what happens? I, I did. I clicked on it, right? Imagine without the caption, though. Without the caption, it's not nearly as interesting. But with the caption, not only adds context, but draws person in, right? And not only are all these posts, not only are they interesting, they subtly tell the world that you've got a listing for sale and that you're a real estate agent selling that listing. But most importantly, these are shareable, right? They have the potential to meet your goal, which is to expand your audience. Someone sees this, so like, you know, if it's a cool video or something neat, start a good conversation, it helps expand your sphere of influence because people might be more inclined to share it. Whereas they're probably not going to share just a, one of the re listing announcements I showed you on the previous slide. It's an important thing to think about. Here's another fantastic example of uh, self-promotion that's not interesting versus interesting. So we talked about listing them. So here's another common one too. It's, it's um, I don't know, we'll call it tooting your own horn because I can't think of another better word for it. Uh, the one on the left is, I've seen these all over the place. Like the, that's just a stock graphic that C21 provides people, right? Look at this Centurion word I won. Yeah, it's great for friends, family. See, I'm sure your mom's like really proud of you. It's okay like when someone's trying to vet you as a real estate agency, you won awards or whatever if they look you up online, but is this going to grow your audience? No, right? Not likely. This is like self-promotion at its finest. You're not even like, you're, you're just kind of selling yourself. On the right, this agent's doing the exact same thing. They're trying to show that they're a successful agent, but they're doing it in an interesting way by going through a typical day in their life, right? Showing how an interesting person has interesting life, is very successful, et cetera, right? It tells a story that a trophy never could. It doesn't just draw you in, but it gives people an opportunity to know you too. That's, that's even more value. That shows personality. The trophy doesn't show any personality. It just shows a trophy, a static image. One on the right, that's a person you want to get to know. You got to make it interesting. So number th tip number three, engage with your audience. Posting on social media is obviously important, right? But posting is just starting the conversation. You don't just abandon a conversation after the first sentence, right? It's just like you wouldn't like abandon a lead that just reached out to you. It's the same thing, right? You got to keep it going. If someone comments on your post, reply to it. Keep, keep the conversation going. Showing you value that feedback and value their comments, it's a, it's a great way to encourage more comments, right? More comments and engagements. And one of the great things with that too, it also helps kickstart the, uh, the algorithm that social media uses to take your post and put it on other people's feeds, right? Social media loves posts that people interact with and it sees them as being popular and hey, like maybe this thing we should share with others. So that's a way to organically grow your, grow your, um, your following show up organically in more people's feeds and more people start interacting with them and it'll start to snowball, right? So the other thing too, not just your own posts and people that come on yours, but comment on other people's posts. I mentioned this before, whether from your followers or even just like totally random people. Say interesting things, be witty, engage with other commenters. That's another thing too. You can get exposure in other people's posts. Actually, like that's a really good way to get exposure. If someone else has a really popular post, with a lot of people looking at it, they're all outside your sphere of influence. You can comment on it. You can expand your level of, of visibility and maybe draw some people to see what you're about, right? This is like the perfect way 
to introduce yourself to other people's spheres of influence. People love when their voice is noticed, right? That's like what they're here in social media for, like to hang out, to start this conversation. So if someone makes a comment, fulfill, fulfill their wish, you know, carry on the conversation with them, right? So there's a trap here, obviously, you need to be careful of. Um, a lot of people, I've seen it before, you can spend your whole day scouring social media, right? Like, don't fall into that trap. Uh, it's important to budget your time. Obviously, like, everyone's got a different amount of time, but you want to budget it. Comment on people's posts efficiently. You don't sit there for, like, hours and hours on end. Like, an efficient 30 minutes a day spent on social media, that's all you really need for this. Like, like efficiency being, like, the key word here. It's okay to spend more time on social media, but it's kind of diminishing returns over time, right? And if it starts taking away from other responsibilities or eating too much of your free time, like you may need to reflect on your usage patterns just to see if you could come up with a more optimal use of your time. All right, tip number four, video. I can't stress this enough. Video is way more effective than photos. I'm sure you've heard it a billion times. It's no big revelation or anything, right? But it's really important to understand why and when videos are much more effective than photos alone, okay? Because the biggest thing though is just videos tell a story. It's an insanely powerful way to achieve many different goals. But by far, the best thing a video can achieve is to give people a glimpse into your personality. This is another really important takeaway from this thing. People love learning about people and video can help with that. It's really easy to do too. Like there's this common misconception that producing video is very time consuming, difficult, requires a lot of like technical expertise. Maybe that was the case like 15 years ago, but like it's not the case anymore. If you have a phone with a camera and you're a realtor, I sure hope you have a phone and like very likely is one with a camera. Uh, you can easily like just record and publish a short video to social media in like a few minutes, right? It doesn't have to be like heavily produced or scripted or anything like that at all. Like actually raw, unscripted, unproduced videos are, are surprisingly effective because they feel more real. They feel like this, they feel personal, right? It's honestly like the best format for connecting with your audience. Like produced videos are great too. They have a place, but just the uns raw, unscripted ones are great for doing what you need to do here. So videos of like insides of homes too, or like better yet, kind of like the specific features of the home that tell an interesting story. Those are very powerful too. Like the, the one with the pool or the fireplace I showed you in the previous slide. Like those are effective videos, right? It's, it's another important thing is to make sure you keep them short and sweet. They don't need to be 10 minutes long, right? 15 to 20 seconds is, is really all you need. Just keep it short, which is good because like the longer video takes more of your time too, right? So it's more effective. Any more than like 20 seconds and it's been shown, like you lose the vast majority of your audience, unless you're doing like some sort of long form video thing. People on short social media, they've got a very, so very, very short attention span, right? The best to cater to it. One thing I've also learned is videos, they're a bajillion. I think I've used bajillion a few times in this presentation, but it's true. They're a bajillion times better when people are in them. You want to give your story a character, right? Something to focus on, something that people, that people can relate to. And there's the, having a person in the video is something that people can relate to. And, and in, in the vast majority of cases too, you want that character in the video to be you. So another thing, like, make sure you add captions. I don't mean like the fancy call out text stuff in the thumbnail, like that's important too, but you also want to make sure you add captions to your text. If, you're, if you're, there's any sort of talking during it. Um, this is kind of like a little bit of a side note, but I've seen different stats, but I think it was generally around like 85% of people will view social media uh, without sound on, right? You're just kind of scrolling through, through your phone. You either got your phone muted or some of the social media platforms when they show like the previews, they mute the video in, uh, previews. Uh, so without any captions, just like closed captions, right? Like you lose context. So it's important, like most platforms have a, a way to like auto-generate your spoken words into captions and then just to verify that they auto generated them properly so they can someone can like watch the video and like read along instead of listening don't just assume people are listening to you and obviously like before like 
advanced fantasy captions are needed. It takes a little bit more tech expertise, but it's actually pretty easy to. A lot of social media platforms have an easy way to let you do that as well. I'll get back to those fancy captions in a second. That's, that's another tip. But first, I want to show you two people on Instagram and some of their recent posts they had. And I want to highlight a few things. One on the left is Jazz Takar. He's a real estate broker. Me and Aaron interviewed him on our podcast, I think about a year ago. And Vani Fast, she's a sales rep from Cutco that does real estate closing. So I think she's coming to talk to the offices before too. These two people really understand how to take advantage of short videos. I'm, I've always been impressed by what they do. They both really understand the importance of like building their personal brand uh, by using video specifically. And you may notice, especially on Jazz's videos, again, on the left, the solid use of like captions and thumbnails. He's really like really good at that. You know, too, you see them in almost every caption there, right? Like they're, they know the importance of branding, branding themselves. The cover of the video is almost as important as the content of the video itself too, right? Because it takes people less than a second to decide if they're going to view your video and you want to make sure that the thumbnail is something that draws them in. It's very, very important. And these two I wanted to highlight, again, more than most because they really understand the importance of the next tip. I brushed on it a little bit before, but number tip number five, become a persona. You want to turn yourself into like a minor internet celebrity. This should be one of your main goals in social media as a real estate agent. Yeah, you sell houses, but social media is about selling yourself and your personality. Your goal should be to become this minor internet celebrity. Turn up the charm, get that charisma flowing. Let the people have this like glimpse inside of your interesting personality, your interesting life, right? It's almost like you're creating your own like mini reality TV show and people like gobble up that kind of stuff. One of the biggest advantages to this, and, I, and we talked to Jazz about this actually on, on the podcast about this specific topic, is if people have watched your videos, if they follow you on social media, they've gotten to know you even though you haven't met them in real life. You're building rapport. I know as an agent, it's important to build rapport with a prospective client, right? You're building rapport with someone you've never met before. You're also developing this mind share in the back of their brain when they think about real estate. Not only is this like a viable way to turn this potential follower into a tangible lead when it's like time for them to sell their house, but when they do get in touch with you, when you first meet them in real life for like, say like a listing presentation, right? You have this huge advantage. They know a lot about you. They've heard your stories. Like they might know what like coffee shops you like to go to in town. They've seen your videos of your dog or the places you like to go hiking, like whatever. Like they, they feel like they know you. They already have this like sense of familiarity. And I can't, I cannot stress this advantage enough. You instantly have this distinct advantage over any other listing agent because they already feel like they know you, right? You don't need to make a first impression because you've already done it a, like a dozen of times over. As dumb as it sounds too, like there's a little bit of that starstruck effect too, right? There's no wall to break down because the wall doesn't exist. You broke it down before you even started talking to the person. They're not guarded, right? The listing's years before you even shaking the person's hand. Like I guarantee they've got people lined up in listing presentations. The one they follow on social media is probably the one they're going to be, you know, making the deal with. They just probably did the, a few listing presentations to make them feel like they're shopping around. It's very powerful stuff. Not something to be taken lightly. This, this should be one of the the primary objectives of social media for an agent. Okay, tip number six. We're almost near the end here. Choose your platform. This is a really simple one. Like, just don't overextend. If you're planning on getting serious social media, like start with like one or two platforms. It doesn't matter which one. Like, choose whichever one you're most familiar with or maybe the one you use a lot already, maybe the one you're most comfortable using, right? Maybe the one with like the demographic of people that you want to get in touch with. Because the, the principles that I've been talking about this whole time, they, they, they exist for any platform. The worst thing you can do, though, is spread yourself too thin. There are like these services that can cross post across multiple platforms and stuff. And like, yeah, like it's okay to use those, but and posting across platforms is one thing, but it's difficult to like engage and in with multiple communities, like and to do that effectively. So when I say like choose your platform, you can still like post them all, but just focus your core effort 
that engagement, all these tips I've been talking about uh, with like maybe one or two. You don't need to stretch it out further than that. Tip number seven, ads. Social media ads are surprisingly good value. It's something that a lot of people don't actually realize. If you need, if like you're getting fresh into social media, you need to kickstart your social media presence. You can literally bribe the platform that you're using to like promote your tweet, your posts, your videos, whatever, um, and get it shown to like a wide audience. And like it, it might sound like cheating because that, that's exactly what it is, right? Um, and that's that's fine. You don't have to spend money, but it's a good way to give you that boost. And it's surprisingly cheap too. One of the most effective uses is your money, in my opinion. Uh, Because you'd be surprised, like just as an example, like $20, like mileage varies, of course, it really depends. Like in my experience, whenever we run social media campaigns for agents, uh, about a $20 ad spend will get you 200 plus engagement. So like people clicking or liking the the post. Uh, Getting off the ground on social media can be just like really slow grind, right? So an ad campaign like that, we promote your posts can be a huge bonus to get things in motion. A little tip though, like when I, when I talk about promoting your posts and spending ad money, I'm not talking about like posting a picture of your recent sale or like crafting an ad, like a, like a print advertisement. You, what you really want to do is you want to take your, your most popular posts, ones that have been successful or maybe you like really like, you think that people will like them too, and you promote them so they'll show up you're like force them into other people's feeds, right? Through by paying whatever the social media platform is to do that. People will see them. And what you really want to do is you want to make sure they, they see them and engage with them, share them, comment them on them, right? You want to like stick to that focus of using these ads to expand your sphere. And the best way to do that is to advertise shareable content. Okay. Make those posts interesting. And you'll find that spending money promoting them will lead to a bunch of followers coming back your way. Okay, tip number eight, social media manager. This is a little bit misleading when I put it up on the original list. Honestly, like 99% of people probably don't need a social media manager and the 1% that do probably won't do it right. Um, so th- th- this, this tip is more like you saying you just don't need one. But a solid focus of like maybe 30 minutes a day, you mentioned before, that's all you need on social media to be successful. Like most platforms, one post a day, some comment follow-up, and commenting on other people's posts. That's all you need to do. And you should generally do it yourself. Like Elon Musk, guy owns Tesla and space. Like he, he does it himself. Donald Trump does it himself, right? Doesn't matter if you like the guy or not. He does it himself and he knows how, how to work the crowd. Mark Hamill, aka Luke Skywalker, he does it himself too. Like all there's all these personal, these really big personas out there that do it themselves and do it very effectively. It's because they, they understand how social media works. You're selling yourself, right? It's best if it comes from you, your videos, your posts, your voice. Having someone else post on your behalf, like generally doesn't work and people can usually see through it. I would personally stay away from hiring a generic third-party social media company too, to do posts for you. Uh, they generally aren't equipped for your target demographic and it comes across as like generic, not very personal. Uh, these posts typically have like very poor engagement and the money is honestly like better suited elsewhere, even just promoting your existing posts they are doing well. Um, I mean, it, they can be like a little okay for like some filler content here and there. Just make sure your, your social media feed isn't like overwhelmed with this third party social media stuff. Like I said, it's really filler content, right? They're not really equipped for that personalization that you really want when you're engaging with social media. So all this being said, though, like I, I have seen social media managers work really well. The best setup, in, in my honest opinion, is if the person who's helping you manage your social media, if their main focus is to make the agent's time more efficiently used, right? Not Their, their job shouldn't be to post on behalf of the agent. This is a bit of a difference there. It's more like a personal assistant with a special skill set, right? So like it might even be a family member or something too. Like maybe you've got a, a son or daughter who excels this stuff. But again, the, this is to like work with the agent, right? Helping them with more mundane tasks like video editing, filming, 
or maybe even coming up with like strategies or ideas on like what to post. They're not taking your place. They're just assisting you with like that busy work so you can free up your time to do other things, right? A lot of like great assistants, like a lot of you probably already have assistants. Uh, they can they can perform this role very effectively. Or if you're thinking of getting an assistant, then maybe it's something you might want to consider when hiring someone to make sure they have the special skill sets for this that you might require. Right? It doesn't have to be a dedicated social media manager. That's that's overkill in my books. All right, and that actually uh, wraps up the list and pretty much what I want to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our video, please hit the like button, the subscribe and even the little bell to get notifications just so you can stay in touch and watch more of these great videos.